97.3 City FM, Relevant Radio, always. Hello and welcome to another edition of Business Weekly on City TV with me, Vivian Kai Loco. We'll bring you all the stories that made headlines in the world of business for this week. The biggest story, of course, for this week is the bowing out of the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Henry Kofi Wampa. And also, we'll tell you what the latest PIAC report is saying about how we spend revenues in the oil and gas sector. And also coming up in this edition, three airlines, that's domestic airlines that suspended operations, are due to resume this year. And to our very first story, where the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Henry Kofi Wampa, has announced he intends to retire from the bank effective 1st April this year. This announcement came as no surprise as there have been growing calls for the governor to step down over a number of issues in the banking industry. For example, issues to do with the stability of the city, also issues to do with the regulation of the microfinance industry and there were some calls from some members of parliament who also had pushed for him to step down. Now there have been some reactions from industry players and others over Dr. Wampa's announcement. Some bankers have praised him for his work during his tenure while others have hit hard at him. Meanwhile, some customers of DKM microfinance company have been rejoicing over the exit of the governor of the Bank of Ghana. They actually blame him for the collapse of that company. Now let me take you to another story that made headlines this week. That is the story to do with the report from PIAC, which gives us an idea of how money from the oil and gas um, industry, that is revenue accrued by the, the state, was used. Now the report covers January 2015 to June 2015. According to the report, Ghana was not able to get any revenue from gas from the Ghana National Gas Company even though it had lifted some amount of gas to the VRA. Now the reason cited for the failure of the country to make money from the gas was that VRA is indebted to the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. Another thing that was revealed in the report was the Salt Pond Oil Company failed to pay royalties to the state even though it had lifted over 24,000 barrels of oil from the Salt Pond oil fields. Now other things that came up from the report was the fact that Ghana lost over 50% in revenue for that period as compared to the previous year. Also, issues that were brought up in the report was that government had taken some money from the Ghana Stabilization Fund, which is to be used to defray debt of the country. Over $222 million was taken from that fund. Meanwhile, we're picking up reports that Yoko has begun investigating the Salt Pond Oil Company for failing to pay government those royalties. Let's move on to some other stories where Ghana is expected to pay high yields on its next year bond, which is to be launched this year. Ghana is seeking about $700 million for that year bond. Now, some economists are saying that Ghana is likely to pay as much as 11% on that bond as compared to the lower figure we recorded last year. Let's still stay with the economy where economists are warning that the latest rating by Fitch on Ghana will scare away investors. Now the rating agency gave Ghana B with a negative outlook but according to some economists this shows that the country's macroeconomic issues among others are not looking good and will push away investors. Let's go to the aviation industry because there are some developments there. For example, three domestic airlines which had suspended operations are likely to resume this year. The three, Antrocare, Fly 540, as well as CityLink, 
are likely to resume operations by the third quarter of this year. According to the Ghana Civil Aviation, the three have made some moves to ensure this becomes a reality. We still stay in the aviation industry and following a report from City Business News on the lapse in the security at the Kotoka International Airport, the Ghana Airport Company has announced that it intends to introduce additional security measures. Now, let me walk you through some of the measures it will be introducing. It includes the screening of passengers before they enter the departure hall. Also, there will be restriction of the entry into the terminal to only the traveling public. Now, the company will also prevent all unauthorized persons from accessing restricted areas and preventing parking of unauthorized vehicles in front of the terminal and finally decongesting the airport square and intensifying police military response. And finally, let's go to the telecom industry where Vodafone Ghana has appointed a new CEO. The company this week announced it has appointed Yolanda Zulika Cuba as its new chief executive officer with effective from 1st May this year. Now, the appointment of Yolanda brings to three the number of women heading telecom companies here in Ghana. Tigo has a woman as the head and Airtel also has a woman as the head of the company. And that's it for today's edition of Business Today on City TV with me, Vivian Kai Loko. Thank you for joining me. See you next week. Bye-bye.